<laughs> Shannon, what happened yesterday? Uh, first, you give credit to the, both of the teams for making it thus far, but you extend a, another level of gratitude for the Patriots for finding a way to win this ball game. Um, I thought Jacksonville offensively played as well as they can play. Uh, Blake Bortles made some throws. I was concerned about him being able to make four or five throws, not only to get first downs, get touchdowns, but maybe flip the field position battle. He did exactly what they asked him to do. But I thought <clears throat> at the end of the first half, they had 55, the, uh, the Patriots had just gone down, got a touchdown. There's 55 seconds left on the clock, and the Jags had two timeouts. And they took a knee. Not a handoff to see if Fournette could break a play, not a screen, something safe. The Patriots only had one timeout. So that would have been interesting to see. Maybe you can, you know, spring something. On the flip side, you go look at last night, you see the Eagles. The Eagles get the ball back with 38 sec 29 seconds on the clock on their own 20. They're up, what, 17? 17? And what do they do? Put the pedal to the map, they go get a field goal. That's the difference. One team was playing to win. The other team was hoping to win. <clears throat> Skip, um, I was disappointed in how poorly the Jags' defense, mainly the secondary, played, especially late third quarter and for the entirety of the fourth quarter. Brandon Cooks is a speed receiver. And with a speed receiver, you must challenge him at the line of scrimmage because if you let him get ahead of steam, what's going to happen when you play off or you press bail, he's going to eat up that cushion so quick that you're going to start to bail up out of there because you think he's running the nine route then he stops. The ball's on its way. There's nothing you can do about it. So I was surprised with how A.J. Boyer played him yesterday, given the fact that Boyer is a Pro Bowl corner. Jalen Rams, I didn't think he had a very good game because they flipped him on the other side when uh, Cook started cooking uh, Boyer, and then he gets a 40-plus yard pass interference. So I was very, very disappointed with how the defense played late in that ball game. Um, Skip, and I don't know if you remember this. I think it was right before the Patriots got the ball. The Jags take a timeout. Out of the timeout on third and seven, they get a delay of game. Now, they pick up the first down, but it was a delay of game. They move them back, then they get a sack. Basically, that's a 10-point swing at worst-case scenario because you look like they're going to be in field goal range. They're going to get three points. If nothing else, maybe even a touchdown. Now you get an opportunity to stretch that lead. Maybe it's 17-10. Who knows it's 21-10. Because this is what you know. I said the magic number to get to in New England when you're playing the Patriots at home in the playoff is 24. That's the cutoff. You got to get to 24. Because you know no matter how well you play defensively, Tom Brady is not done until the clock says zero. I don't think we give the Patriots defense nearly enough credit. And see, this is where Skip and I part ways. Because in the fourth quarter, zero points, 0 for 5 on third downs, two first downs. That's how Tom Brady got back in this ball game. Without that, there is no miraculous comeback. There is no Tom Brady being hero because of what the Patriots defense was allowed to do. But if the Patriots go on and win this Super Bowl, the highlight will be third and 18 down by 10 in the fourth quarter. Skip, that's his bigger throw. That's his biggest clutch throw that you'll see Tom Brady make. What I don't understand is that you've been playing so much man coverage and now all of a sudden you're going to play zone and allow windows to open up for Tom Brady and Danny Amendola. That's some of the things I don't understand. I think maybe Gronk going out of the game changed the way they were, some of their aggressiveness. They felt comfortable, but I'm surprised that they did not challenge these receivers a lot more than what I saw yesterday. You must put hands on Amendola. You must put hands on Cook. They didn't do that. Give Tom Brady credit. They found it. Josh McDaniel called it. Got, his, got in the rhythm. Started calling a great game plan. And Matt Patricia, you might not think he's doing anything. It might be Coach Belichick. But if you look at that fourth quarter, that was as dominating a performance that you've seen in any playoff this year. And this is why since week five, they've had the number one scoring defense in all of football. So kudos to the uh, New England Patriots. But I feel Jacksonville got very, very conservative in their approach, mm -hmm. hoping to win. The clock would run out as opposed to keeping the uh, pedal to the metal and going on and winning this ball game. Mm. So, I loved how you did that. I loved how you attempted to undercut and discount what Tom Brady did in the fourth quarter yesterday, and it's fine. I'm, I'm going to get that all week for two weeks of trying to discount Tom Brady. I give you all the points you made about Jacksonville, maybe in certain cases playing not to win, playing not to lose. Not to lose, yeah. And I give you that finally, 
after Blake Bortles turned into Eli Bortles versus Tom Brady for much of that game that finally the Patriot defense did what it should have done from the start. It locked down and locked in and started to get a little more heat thanks to James Harrison on Blake Bortles. And he started to play a little more like the guy that we saw much of the year, a guy who's pretty good, but he's not real good. Right. A guy who threw 21 touchdowns to 13 interceptions during the regular season and had a QBR of 56, which on 0 to 100 scale is just a little above average. Finally, that guy was exposed in the fourth quarter by a Patriot defense that should have done it much earlier because he was completing third down throw after third down throw. And again, he had, what, six third down conversions? Six or ten in yeah. the first three quarters. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Tom Brady had three third down conversions for the entire football game. But in the end, when it was time, Tom Brady did it again. So how did we be able to do that in the fourth Tom quarter? Tom Brady did it again. How, when it looked like, with eight minutes and 45 seconds left, that they were hopeless, hopelessly behind by 10 points, he did it again. And I want to put this in perspective for everyone. There's obviously no Julian Edelman, no Martellus Bennett from last year. And in the end, the go-to receiver, I want people to understand this, was Danny Amendola. He is 5 feet 11 inches tall and he weighs 190 pounds, and once upon a time, he was undrafted out of Texas Tech because he ran a 4-7-40 at the Combine. This is your go-to receiver in the fourth quarter. This is the guy who caught the third and 18 pass over the middle, and it was a thing of beauty. Look at Brady's footwork. If we can see that one more time in the pocket, we're seeing one to the outside. But again... For Tom Brady to be able to beat the cover two with him turning <clears throat> underneath both the safeties and drop it just over the linebackers to little Danny Amendola in the middle of the field by, by sliding to his left to beat the rush, it's just a masterpiece. It's a thing of beauty. It's clutchness beyond comprehension. Throwing to Danny Amendola, I want everybody to understand, there's no Julio Jones out there. There's obviously no Antonio Brown. There's not even an Alshon Jeffrey on the field. But, Skip, that's, that's the point that you keep missing. You assume and you want people to believe, but because they're not these guys, they can't play. They fit what yeah. the Patriots do. It's because Tom Brady makes them fit what he does. He'll do it with anybody. He could take Shannon Sharp at almost age 50 and say, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll win with Shannon Sharp. So I, so and, and remember, he lost Gronk late in the second quarter again. He didn't have Gronk for the last eight games last year. And he did it again in the second half with no Gronkowski. It's just incomprehensible to me. And Shannon Sharp, you have to understand... You realize they had 46 yards rushing and won the football game? And more, more important, remember, they only had 28 yards rushing when Deion Lewis got, lay, got loose on the third and nine late in the game. Mm -hmm. Remember this? That was the clock-killing play when yeah. he went wide? Yes. At that point, they had 28 yards rushing, and they still beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. How is that? It's because Tom Brady keeps coming up all-time, all-time clutch. Game after game after game. And remember, the, the Patriots had the ball for only 25 minutes. Blake Bortles had it for 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. 35 to 25? Mm -hmm. And you said all last week, there's no way Tom Brady's going to throw for 300 against this defense. Well, guess what? In just 25 minutes, he threw for 290. How did he do that? So, uh, if you don't mind me asking, can you tell me the part that Tom Brady played that... Whew. Gave up zero points and two first downs and 0 for 5 on third down. Can I, you tell me the they part? They finally that he locked in, but no, you no, said, no, so you keep saying finally. As you said all last week, Jacksonville's not good enough on offense, but it took three quarters for them to finally draw a bead on Blake Bortles. They played yeah, four. He needed they, the ball back, but again, he's going up against as athletic and talented a defense as there is in the National Football yeah. League. And he is shredding it under pressure in the fourth quarter where you cannot make a mistake. How many picks did he throw yesterday? He you kept saying, he was down the stretch. He was horrible. He threw all these picks. He threw zero yesterday. Yeah. Did Blake Bortles throw Woo. a pick? But, no. the but the difference... The, the, the Patriot defense takes it away from nobody. It's what they don't skip, do. But Did they create turnovers? Who, who won the turnover battle yesterday? One to nothing. Uh, one to nothing. Wait, New England lost the turnover battle and beat Jacksonville? But, Skip, here's God. the thing that you don't understand. It's not how much long you possess the ball. 
at the end of those possessions, are you getting punts? Or, I mean, are you getting field goals? Are you getting touchdowns? Or are you punting the ball? Because what we saw is that they were possessing the ball for three, four, five minutes, but they were punting it away. No harm, no mm -hmm. foul. If you're going to possess the ball, just possessing the football doesn't win you the game. Points win you games. And they had opportunities to put the game away. As I mentioned, right before the half, 55 seconds, three timeouts on your 25. At least run, the, show your quarterback, hand the ball to Fournette. Maybe he springs one. You never know. You run a screen. They only have one timeout. So if you don't get anything, you just take a knee and you go from there. You look at Doug Peterson, mm -hmm. the game he called on his own 20, 29 seconds with two timeouts. Nick Foles go get a field goal. Mm -hmm. Again, you playing to win as opposed to hoping to win. I felt later in that ball game, Skip, they started hoping. Because if you remember the first half, I say they should throw early to run late. Uh, the Patriots will say, we know you want to run the ball on first down. So we're not going to allow you to do it. And then they got the lead. Chung was basically playing a linebacker. He moved from center field. He moved from the two deep safety. He was playing right next to Van Oy. Mm -hmm. And they still was trying to run the ball. You must throw when you know they're in single coverage, Skip. And they played right into the hands of the Patriots. Give the Patriots credit because you have to stay close enough. Look, in playoff games, the momentum doesn't swing like a regular season game. It goes back and forth, back and forth. In a playoff game, you'll have it. The question is, when you have the momentum, can you put enough separation between you and your opponent? And when Jacksonville had the momentum, they didn't do that. New England got the momentum. They got two touchdowns. They win the game. Kudos. But, Skip, I don't know what game you were watching yesterday. I was watching Tom Brady be as clutch, the, the clutchest athletic performer in any sport we have ever seen, and he did it again on the biggest stage yesterday. I've never seen anything like it. All year long, you make a case. I'll take Aaron Rodgers because in a vacuum, he's the greatest thrower of the football. Baloney! Baloney! Aaron Rodgers won one Super Bowl seven years ago. He's five and six in the postseason since then. This guy on the biggest stages keeps coming up as clutch as anybody ever. Like I told you last year, I'm the biggest Michael Jordan fan you will find on the planet. But this guy is even more clutch than Michael Jordan. It can't Jordan. be because Michael Jordan has never lost in the finals. So you can't say no. he's more clutch when he's lost two games the, in the, the finals. The problem is, for Michael, he was too good for his own good because they never played a single game seven in any of those finals. That, and these are all game seven so, kind of so games. So that goes to his greatness that he wouldn't allow it to get to that point. Yeah. Now, see, that's the point that you make when you're trying to bash LeBron. How great Michael Jordan was, he never went to a game seven. Now to try to flip it to show Tom Brady has surpassed him, you said if he, so, he should have went to game seven to show his clutchness. You can't have it both ways. Okay, and speaking of LeBron James, I, I know he's in his 15th year and he's Iron Man. Baloney. This guy at age 40 is, is like he's 22. Skip, he plays a, he's in his eight, at the end of his 18th year and he played that level Skip, he yesterday. plays one side of the ball. Ooh, ooh. But it's still football, man, it, and he still gets rocked. Did Miles Jack not jack him he, up? Yeah, he got he got Ooh. hit a couple of times, Skip. But you can't say a guy that's playing both offense and defense in year 15 is the equivalent of a guy playing offense at 18 and 18 year at the quarterback position. Come on, Skip. Now let's be real about this. I'm not years? trying to take anything away yeah. from Tom Brady. You see any I'm not decline? trying to. You see any decline? I'm not in trying game? to poo-poo what he's done. But you're trying to make it seem like he. What? Oh my God! And say again. I know you're trying to hold. You don't want to talk about it. And he did this with 12 stitches in his wait, head. Wait, wait. Time out. Time out. I'm glad you just said that. Did I bring up... It was 10 stitches. Did I bring up anything about his hand? In any... I've spoken 300 words, whatever I've spoken, not about half as many as you have so far. But the point is, did I bring up his hand one time, Joy Taylor? No, you did not. I did not mention it because I don't need to mention it. It doesn't matter. You, was you gonna, brought it up. You were going to mention it. You brought it up. That's why you kept hyping it last Way week. Way to go, Shannon. You kept I'm hyping it last I week. I didn't hype it at all. Gave, I just told Wait, 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 wait. Hold on just a second. You were the guy ah. who on Thursday show said the Patriots are fabricating this injury. Wait, did he go cut himself in the locker room Skip, so he could put not, 10 Skip, stitches in? Not, Maybe they I, painted Skip, the 10 Skip, stitches that's on. That's not what I said. Did they paint them I on? Said, I said they're, they're Lord um, have mercy. Exactly. Embelling, embellishing. First you used the word fabricated. The second day you said... Maybe I went a little too no, far. No, I didn't, I didn't say maybe I went too far. I said maybe I didn't do a good enough
enough job explaining it. I'm saying he's injured, but I'm saying they're embellishing the extent. The mm -hmm. cut was not in the palm. Now, if he's a defensive or offensive lineman and he got the lockout, okay. Yeah. If he's a receiver and he has to catch the ball, okay. Skip, the, the cut was on the backside I, of his hand, so I, stop. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.